right, good morning, Concord High School. This is uh, the Sixth Floor Museum at Dealey Plaza. Good morning. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. Good morning. Uh, my name is Stephen Fagan. I'm the curator here at the museum, and uh, this is a program that we like to do called Living History, where we invite someone who uh, experienced the weekend of the Kennedy assassination here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and we're going to have a conversation and, and take a look at some photographs and share that experience with them, and then you guys will have a chance towards the end of the program to uh, ask some questions. Uh, just for a little bit of orientation, we are broadcasting from the first floor of the former Texas School Book Depository Building right here in Dealey Plaza. There's a window right behind the, ca the uh, camera today, and I'm actually looking at Elm Street at the exact spot where the assassination took place almost 54 years ago on November 22, 1963. This is an event that is more than half a century removed from our uh, present day. So it's, it's wonderful that we still have storytellers available to share their experiences with us. And today I'm here with a good friend of this museum. This is Gene Gordon. He was the chief photographer at the Fort Worth Press back in 1963. And I hope you'll join me in welcoming Gene to share his story with us today. Thank you. Now, Gene, uh, there were a couple of papers in Dallas, major dailies. There were a couple of papers in Fort Worth. You worked at the Fort Worth Press. Tell us a little bit about yes. that paper. Uh, Fort Worth Press was the underdog, uh, small uh, paper, originally a morning paper, and we couldn't compete in that market, so we switched to an afternoon paper, uh, and it closed in 1975. Okay. Were you with them till the very end? Yes. Okay. Then I went to the competition. To the, the Fort Worth Star, Star Telegram. Telegram. Right. Fort Star Telegram. Now, you were the chief photographer. What kind of a staff did you have? Uh, two other photographers. Okay. All right. So, when a major event like, say, the president coming to town, when that occurred, would, would all three photographers, you and your two staff members, would they all cover that event? Uh, Probably, yes. Okay. Is that what happened uh, in November of 63? Uh, yes. Okay. So, so President Kennedy, uh, he was touring the state of Texas. He had gone uh, to San Antonio, Texas, and then Houston. And then on the night of Thursday, November 21st, the night before the assassination, he went to Fort Worth, arrived at Carswell Air Force Base. Yes. And you were there with your camera. True. All right. Let's take a look because we have a lot of your pictures. Your pictures are now part of the collection here at the Sixth Floor Museum. We're honored to have them. So we're going to take a look at some of the pictures you took. Uh, so this is a picture of the, the crowd waiting there at the Air Force Base. Is that right? Yes. A local Air Force Base. Uh, there were probably a hundred people there uh, to see them arrive. That's a, that's uh, a pretty late. small crowd actually. But well, true. It was late at night though, right? Yeah, it was. Okay. Did you talk to these folks when you, or ask them uh, if they wanted to have their picture taken? No, <laughs> I just did it. Okay, all right. Um, establishing shots like this, this is obviously not something that maybe was going to be published in the paper, but you obviously have to document crowd size sure. and things like yes. that. There are some neat signs uh, in the background here. I love to study photographs like this because they provide such a window into that, that moment in time. You see a welcome Mr. President sign, but the one I really like is this one back here, welcome to Texas, Jack and Jackie. Uh, we actually have one of those original signs uh, in our collection, and I can tell you that that welcome to Texas, Jack and Jackie, all those letters are in uh, bright red sparkly glitter. You can't get that uh, from this photograph, but those are uh, that's a pretty remarkable remarkable sign and we're really glad to have one of those from over uh, 50 there years were, later. There were lots of those signs uh, the next morning at the, uh, the two events. Okay, I think someone made them and was selling them there. And, and do you, I, do you I, remember that? Very likely, okay. yes. Now this next picture we're going to look at, this is a wider shot. That, you know, that looks like more than a hundred people, but but maybe yeah. maybe it's just uh, the, the angle of the picture. What I, what I like about this, though, is in the far back, if you look, I'm going to circle it with the mouse here today, but way back here, that is the Fort Worth skyline, and we're able to see it because it's all lit up with Christmas lights. Right. Now, tell us about that. Well, uh, there were uh, several large downtown buildings uh, that they decorated with lights outlined the building with lights and they uh, they turned them on at Christmas time every year but uh, they decided to do it 
this evening in November so that Kennedy could see the, uh, the lights in the downtown when he arrived. Okay, so for, from, from the sky they lit it up so he yeah. could see, see his approach to Fort Worth. That's very True. nice. Um, the, the signs again looking at these I see one that says Goldwater in 1864 which is a reference to uh, Kennedy's upcoming 1964 re-election campaign most people thought he was going to face Republican Barry Goldwater and yeah. obviously not a fan of Goldwater who feels that he is in the wrong century uh, there, there's some other details in this picture we see a little bit of police presence but really you don't see a lot of people holding this crowd of bystanders back uh, what was the security uh, like at Carswell? Just the uh, the military, the Air Force security okay. was there. Okay. Uh, no concerns whatsoever that something might no. happen? No. It was a different day. Okay. Uh, you, you, of course, were aware of the atmosphere, the general atmosphere in Dallas. Did you have any concerns about the president's safety knowing he was going to be going to Dallas the next day? Well, I didn't think a lot about, uh, about the safety concerns in Dallas. Uh, I was just uh, enjoying the, uh, the events there in Fort Worth at the time. Now you mentioned the uh, law enforcement. Is it, is, this is the escort, I guess, that's going to take yes. them to the Hotel Texas after True. they land there. Right. And, uh, and you can see it's, it's hard to judge the size of the crowd because it's so dark. I'm seeing a big yeah. spotlight there. Is that pretty much what they use to light the, uh, the tarmac? The, yes, the runway there. Okay. Uh, Carswell, of course, was a military base. Normally, civilian folks weren't allowed on there, but there were uh, th that was allowed when the president was coming, so that folks would have a chance to come and see. That's it. true. Yeah. So and let's. Uh, all right. So there's Air Force One, and now we see the arrival of the Kennedys. And uh, tell us about this moment. What do you remember from this? Well. Uh, it was very dark there uh, where the plane was, uh, not much light. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to capture the, uh, the moment there with when he uh, came in and was greeted mm -hmm. by uh, local people. Yeah, we see some women here wearing, wearing furs, local dignitaries. Uh, here, this, this man holding the cowboy hat, that's Governor John Connolly, and right, right behind him uh, you can see uh, Mrs. Kennedy, just a little bit of her hair there, and of course the president, and further on back, some of the other Texas dignitaries. Back here, this fellow right here, but I'm circling, that is Secret Service Agent Clint Hill, who of course the very next day would jump onto the back of the limousine uh, as the assassination was taking place. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, better better picture of the Kennedys there. There's Mrs. Yes. Kennedy with her roses, and you see the president, and then Governor Connolly next to him. Uh, greeting. Is, was this the first time you had covered a president? No, I had uh, photographed other presidents. Like, like who? Who else did you photograph? Okay, uh, Nixon. Uh, uh, you had photographed Nixon when he was vice president before this, or? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'd photograph uh, Eisenhower. Okay. Uh, two or three other presidents. Okay. Uh, was it was it exciting to cover the president? Was there well, yeah. a... It was, it was the event of the day. Okay, yes. I would imagine that, that the president coming to town, not something that happens every day, especially back in the early 60s. True. Yeah. All right. Again, just several, several more good pictures of the Kennedys here. Uh, th this is uh, Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth, who was really Kennedy's local host in Fort Worth. True. You knew Jim, I believe, didn't yes, you? Yes, good friend. Yeah. And then we have Nellie Connolly here, the First Lady of Texas, and her husband, the Governor John Connolly. That's great. I see a lot of camera people there where you having to uh, sort of push your way toward, through the crowd to get these yeah, pictures. Yeah, it was, it was a little crowded. Were you holding your camera up over your head? Uh, yes, that uh, I would have had my camera above my head to uh, see over the people in front. Okay, do, do, so you would have had your camera up here, right? Right. Okay, so so you weren't actually looking through the viewfinder, so the fact that we can actually see the Kennedys in that picture is, is pretty good. Pretty yeah. good Pretty good work on your part. 
All right, let's let's take a look. These are so dark because, of course, there weren't very many lights. I like this one, though, because you basically just see the president and first lady just walking out into complete blackness there. Yeah. Um, you think about presidential security, and, and I don't think in 2017 the president would be allowed to just wander uh, an airport runway in total darkness. That True. seems like something that uh, probably wouldn't happen today. Yeah, the next day at the, at the breakfast talk, uh, we... Uh, there's a l large head table with uh, all of the uh, politicians and mm -hmm. local people. And I had free access. Uh, I was four or five feet away from, the, yeah. from everyone. And I don't think that would happen now. Yeah, security, was it was it normally pretty lax regardless of who was in town, dignitaries, things no. like that? Yeah, there okay. was no, no fear. Okay. And one last picture from that Thursday night at the airport, so we see the cars, the, the, the presidential entourage, they're going to get in these cars and go to downtown Fort Worth to the Hotel Texas, where the Kennedys are going to spend the night. Now, now you have a busy day the next day, so what do you do after you leave Carswell on Thursday? Okay, it was probably 11 o'clock, and I uh, went to my office and developed the film, made some prints, and then uh, got ready for the early morning events the next day. Now, you, you developed your own film? You processed it? Right. Okay. Since it wasn't digital, I think you might need to explain a little bit about how you would take a roll of film from your camera and turn that into the prints that we are looking at here. Right. Okay. Well, uh, film had to go through a process. Uh, developer and uh, stop bath and, and fixer solutions. And that uh, then you had a negative, film negative, mm -hmm. of the image. You dried that and... Uh, and put it, the uh, negative in an enlarger and uh, made uh, exposed paper, developed the paper, dried it. Wow. So how long would it take to typically process a roll of, I'm guessing, 24, 36 pictures max? Oh, uh, I would estimate 30 minutes. Uh, Okay. If you were really in a hurry. But you had never seen those pictures before. Today, you know, when we take a picture, we can review it immediately. And if sure. we don't like it, we junk it and yeah. just take a new one. That's but right. <laughs> you took what you could, not knowing what you had, and then you didn't discover until later whether or not you had a good picture. Right. That That is pretty remarkable. And you had to do that every day of your career uh, in, 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 as, a, as a professional photographer. That's really remarkable. So you, you're, you're up very late into the early hours of the morning processing your film from the air airport but then you're out at the Hotel Texas the very next morning true all right so tell me about going out to the uh, the airport or excuse me the hotel that morning here's a good picture of the Kennedy or President Kennedy and Vice President Johnson outside okay. uh, there was a parking lot covered a full city block across from the hotel and he would make an appearance there uh, before the breakfast meeting mm -hmm. uh, the breakfast couldn't accommodate uh, all of his fans so uh, he made the speech on the parking lot they had a, a flatbed 18 wheeler trailer uh, for the uh, speaker stand and a similar trailer facing that for the media mm -hmm. to to uh, record the event and we and do I, we do see a lot of a lot of photographers right. uh, in this in this yeah. photograph right as you said right up close to the right. president I went by this uh, this site uh, early, probably seven o'clock, and I uh, determined that I wanted to have a, a an elevated view uh, behind the the speaker's platform of the crowd. Yeah, here uh, we go. And so I uh, I went to my office and got an eight foot step ladder and uh, secured it under the uh, the speaker's platform. Uh, waiting to uh, for the opportunity to use it and uh, later uh, this is Jim Wright speaking right yeah uh, later when uh, JFK uh, was ready to speak uh, I went up the ladder and got one exposure this, and a, this one right here I'm guessing. yes okay. and a Secret Service man tugged on my pant leg and I said <laughs> uh, What's the problem? I'm not going to shoot the president. And wow. four hours later, he was dead. Right, right. 
So, so the Secret Service agent felt you were hovering, didn't like you behind the president like that. <laughs> sure. it, it's remarkable because look at the sea of photographers just, you know, a couple feet away from him, but they were real concerned about you standing behind him. That was, True. <laughs> um, now, the, 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 we've been looking at a series of pictures here, and they're so good, and there's, there's so many rich details in photographs like these. I want to go back to that first one just for a moment. We're looking at, at one of these great pictures here, and I, I see... Uh, Welcome to Fort Worth, where the West begins on the marquee of the hotel, and uh, we see everybody wearing uh, raincoats. Gene, these you know, not the president, of course. He he rarely wore a hat and didn't wear a raincoat very often, but we see the president, uh, the vice president, all all in a raincoat, bundled up here, and that's because it had been raining just shortly before they came out there, right? That's right. Yeah, a little little shower early in the morning. W were you concerned that that would affect your ability to take pictures during this speech? Uh, not too much, no. Okay. Well, you can actually see, I, I love the details in this, if you look at the little podium here, you can see it's all speckled with raindrops. Uh, no, one, no one went out and cleaned off the podium before uh, the uh, presidential party went out there. Also in this crowd, there's several thousand people back here. You can just see them all the way back to those buildings, the Greyhound Station in the background. There's also, in the dead center here, there's uh, this sign that says JFK in 64, which of course is rather poignant because he never lived to run for re-election, although clearly there's a supporter out there in the crowd that day. And then the one exposure you got of the president from behind, uh, this is a unique picture. There's hundreds of pictures taken outside the hotel that morning, and yours is the only one to capture this vantage point. So it is a really remarkable picture. Uh, you see all the umbrellas in the crowd. A lot of people still have their umbrellas out. We see a lot of people in slickers, all the police officers. And there's actually a, a, a little famous person in the, uh, in the crowd that day that we can point out to you. I don't know if you guys can see him very clearly on your screen, but I'm going to circle him. This little kid who is sitting on someone's shoulders in the crowd that day. Can you see the little guy I'm circling? He's wearing a white shirt. Okay. That is an actor who actually just passed away earlier this year. His name is Bill Paxton, and he was in a bunch of movies. He was in the movie Titanic and Apollo 13, Twister. He was in an HBO series called Big Love. And Bill Paxton was eight years old, eight-year-old little kid out there with his dad and his brother, and he was sitting on uh, a stranger's shoulder. Someone in the crowd actually picked him up and put him on his shoulders, a guy he didn't even know, and he watched the president, and that is captured in this... Um, in this picture. So, um, Gene, this is the only picture I know of that shows both little Bill Paxton and Kennedy in the same shot. I, I think we sent him this picture not too long before he uh, he passed away, unfortunately. Good. Untimely death earlier this year. A couple more pictures. So the Secret Service forced you to get off your stepladder and you went around to the front. Correct, yes. And that's what we're looking at here? Onto the media platform. Okay. And this, these are some good shots, too. Uh, the president speaking, we see Vice President Johnson, Governor John Connolly right here, Secret Service agent down here in front. What did you do with the stepladder? Did you just have to abandon it? Yeah. Uh, after I left, the uh, official JFK photographer got it out and did a similar picture. Oh, he did? Yes. Okay. And it's in the museum here. Okay. Well, um, I guess he was allowed to do that because he was the official White House photographer. True. But as far as news photographs, I've never seen another one taken from that, that vantage point. All right. When you're doing something like this, you're running around, obviously changing positions, taking lots of pictures. Are you able to kind of tune in to what the president's saying? Uh, not so much, no. Uh, just thinking about uh, uh, how to photograph the event. Always like where your next shot's going to be. Right. And, and did you move around just to get a variety? Yes. Okay. Another really good one here of the, uh, of the president speaking. Mrs. Kennedy did not come out uh, for the early morning parking lot speech. She was inside the hotel. Um, after the, the speech, the president went over to the crowd, and you got some great pictures of the crowd. Tell me about this. Yeah, I, uh, he came right in front of the uh, media platform and uh, he got uh, people really eager to reach out and touch him. Yeah, now this is one of those from a high vantage point, so this is one of those camera above your head sort of no, shots. No, uh, I was actually above the, the crowd on the platform. Oh, okay, so you were just shooting down from that little right. elevated platform you were True. on. Okay, all right. 
one of my one of my favorite favorite pictures i love this picture because of the embrace the president with this wonderful expression on his face making direct eye contact with this uh, elderly woman and you can see what a grip she has on the president's arm that's that's a pretty pretty remarkable thing the, the secret service just let her grab the president's arm like that but they're they're in this crowd of a thousand or more people they're clearly having a moment just the two of them which i love uh, when you take a picture like this, obviously you wouldn't see this photograph, see how it turned out until much later in the day, right? True. Yeah. Okay. So after this is over, the president uh, uh, heads back towards the entry to the hotel, and you followed him right into the hotel, didn't you? Right. Okay. I guess you're walking backwards here, <laughs> taking this picture? <laughs> yes. Okay. And Okay, so here's the platform where the president was standing, and you said you had a step ladder, but you put back over here by these steps underneath the uh, okay and did you trailer. did you were, was the step ladder set up on the ground on the concrete or was it's, it up on the platform no it's lying under the platform okay all right fascinating and then of course the president had to stop and shake hands and pet uh, that this horse in this picture yes these were sheriff's deputies on a mounted patrol okay and he he stopped to talk to them that that first horse uh, is uh, named Snuffy. I can tell you that. Right. We know his name. Yeah. Um, all right. So then from there, you went inside, and it's time for the Fort Worth breakfast, the Chamber of Commerce breakfast. Yes. And so we're looking at the choir, the uh, Texas Boys Choir, famous That's choir, right. performing yes. that day, and you took a picture of them, all in their matching outfits here. And then let's get a wider shot. Here is the breakfast crowd. All of these folks who. Uh, who uh, attended the breakfast in the ballroom there at the Hotel Texas. Now, did you get a chance to eat while you were there? No. They did not feed you breakfast? No. That was a rough morning for you, having stayed up so late the night before, and it's, it's a shame they couldn't give you something to eat. All right, so here we see the president at the, uh, the front there of the, uh, the podium at the head table. Right. What, what memories, we're gonna cycle through some of these pictures, what memories do you have of the breakfast? Uh, I, I was really just, uh, working, trying to uh, anticipate what would happen and uh, and record it. Mm -hmm. We have this great picture of Lyndon Johnson sort of invading President Kennedy's personal space. Right. Uh, he, Lyndon Johnson was very famous for kind of getting right in people's faces, and, and you, you documented a really nice moment of this. Um, it, it's you know poignant looking back on these because this was obviously President Kennedy's last meal, uh, the last time he sat down uh, for uh, for breakfast or for any meal at all. I think Lemon was probably considered an outsider. He wasn't really on the on the uh, group. Well, it wasn't part of sort of the Kennedy inner circle, right? Okay. Yeah, and uh, but he did a, a great job when he became president of following through on the initiatives that JFK had wanted to do. Right. He made civil rights a priority right. and yeah, it was very important to him in the aftermath of the assassination to uh, honor the president with that. And now we have Mrs. Kennedy arriving. Now she came in late. True. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, that was uh, an event. He, uh, he commented on that, that, uh, that she uh, was uh, arriving late, but she looked a lot better than he did. <laughs> she walked through the crowd. I think they gave her a standing ovation. Uh, she, she was right. such a popular figure. It's it's right. it's hard to uh, to describe it today. But she had this glamorous appeal internationally. I right. suppose she came in through the uh, uh, ballroom kitchen area mm -hmm. and uh, walked uh, behind the uh, people on the speaker's platform. And then just this great shot of the two of them looking at each other. Again, right. Is this? I think is this one of your favorite pictures? I, I like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's a neat moment between them. Yeah. And uh, this was when all the people were introduced on the speaker's platform. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It, you know, looking at these pictures, everybody's smiling. Everybody's happy. It's a very upbeat day. Even the rain went away and the sun came out. But there's there's such kind of a, a, a sad. Uh, poignancy to all of these photographs because we all know the inevitability of what's about to happen and that that makes these pictures take on this meaningful significance. Sure. So the Kennedys 
all sit down to breakfast. This is a great wide shot here uh, where we see all those photographers crouching down. That's the position you would have been in to take the pictures we just looked at. Yes. Okay. And then you backed up and Kennedy's at the podium speaking. There's Kennedy there. And so you're back on the other side of the, uh, the, the head table on the far right hand side yes. there. And we see the scope of this crowd. It's such a big crowd. Lots of uh, little pillbox hats. To, I guess Jackie having this influence on fashion at the time. Yes. And then way back there in the back, we can see the Texas Boys Choir. And way over here on the other side, if you can look real hard, you might see some tubas and instruments there above the crowd. That's the Eastern Hills High School Band. And they're the ones that played Hail to the Chief for the President when he walked in that day. You have this great picture that sort of has everybody in it. And then that is where we're going to stop your photographs from November 22nd. We're going to pick it up a little bit later that weekend because you took some other great pictures in Fort Worth. But from here, you stayed in Fort Worth while the rest of the presidential group went to Dallas. Yes, this uh, uh, speech I think happened maybe about nine o'clock uh, breakfast uh, mm -hmm. speech and uh, I worked for an afternoon paper had a, a deadline uh, a little before noon so I went back to my office and processed all the pictures okay and were you able to keep keep up with what was happening with the uh, presidential no, visit no uh, I, I uh, processed all my pictures uh, met the deadline uh, and then went out to lunch at a sandwich place and that's where I heard about the assassination. So I came to Dallas and uh, got to the, uh, the hospital. Uh, actually, I think it had just been removed from the hospital when I got there and uh, attended a press conference there at the hospital, then drove over to uh, Love Field, but uh, Air Force One was, was in the air taking off when I got there. So you were just behind, just, just a few minutes behind at the hospital and then back out at the airport. Right. But, but, but that was quite a drive, you rushing over all the way from Fort Worth yeah. going to downtown 30, Dallas. 30, 35 miles. Yeah. Now, obviously this is not what you intended to do with your afternoon. Right. Uh, how do you balance? You've got obviously a professional job, you've got your camera, you're ready to go, but there's also this the enormity of what's happened, the President of the United States being killed. Yeah, it was a uh, very emotional time. Having just taken all these great photographs of him the last, the night before and the morning of, yes. uh, was, this, was this a tough, tough day for you? Uh, yes, it was. Uh, we don't have any pictures from either the, the, the hospital or the airport. Did you, did you take a lot of pictures when you were in Dallas? Uh, no, uh, it was uh, after the fact there, there wasn't much to photograph. So from Love Field, the, the Air Force One has already taken off, it's already in the air, what do you do then? Uh, just went back to the, uh, to my office and mm -hmm. uh, did the routine things. W was it a, a chaotic atmosphere in the, in the newsroom? Yes, very much. Okay. Uh, so some of the guys from Fort Worth Press were coming to Dallas, going to police headquarters and things like that. Right. Where, do you remember where you sent your staff members that day? Uh, I think uh, I think I had somebody over here. Okay. Went over to the police station? Yes. Okay. All right. So that was Friday. Did you go home at a reasonable time or did you have to stay late? No, I, uh, I didn't, uh, didn't work late that night. Okay. Saturday, does anything stand out from that particular day? Not really. Okay. Things, things change the next day, though. Sunday, Lee Harvey Oswald is killed while he's in police custody. That's right. How'd you find out about that? Uh, just through the media. Okay. Did, did you do anything? Uh, no. Okay. But Oswald was going to be buried the very next day at Rose Hill Memorial Park in Fort right. Worth, and that is something that you, you went out and covered. Yeah, right? Okay. Uh, and that wasn't uh, too well known, I think. I, uh, there wasn't much uh, talk about the funeral arrangements. <laughs> Monday was the day that President Kennedy was buried, and the day Officer J.D. Tippett was buried, and also the day Oswald was buried, all within just a couple of hours of each okay. other. Three funerals taking place. 
Uh, we're going to look at some of these great pictures you took out there at Rose Hill. Um, so we're seeing the, uh, this is sort of from a distance, we see the, the mound of earth there covered in the, the, the um, uh, blankets there, and there's Oswald's uh, casket, or is that just, the, that might be no, the, that, uh, the vault? That's the vault. Probably. Okay, so yeah, this is early on when they're... Before, yes. Okay. And then you stuck around, and here we have Oswald's casket. There's something kind of unique about this picture. Yes, all these uh, people carrying the casket are uh, reporters, uh, several there, uh, United Press and Associated Press and uh, uh, other local news people. There, there weren't, uh, there weren't enough family members or, or anybody really to, to no. carry the casket, so they had to turn no. to the news media. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they uh, didn't really have a, a pastor. There was a, a, a pastor who uh, actually worked for the uh, uh, a group of churches uh, that were organized to cooperate with each other and he Louis was, Saunders right yes Louis Saunders is that is that him in this picture uh, no that's the uh, uh, that's the man uh, manager of the funeral of the uh, uh, cemetery oh okay and the woman in the center is Lee Harvey Oswald's mother uh, Marguerite and she's holding one of the Oswald daughters there and you can just see in her in her face there's she's just so so clearly distraught over everything yes. that's happened and then we're gonna jump here. Here is the Oswald family. So there's yeah, the brother. Yep, Robert in the center. Uh -huh. And then uh, on the left hand side in this picture, we see young Marina Oswald's widow, and then one of the girls, and then of course Marguerite holding the other baby. Um, you know, a funeral, of course, is a very private, sad moment for anybody, yes. and you're having to cover it there as a photographer. Did you feel anything as far as, did it feel intrusive to be there taking these pictures? Uh, it didn't bother me. Okay. Uh, I uh, perhaps should have felt uh, concerned about that. With all of the things that had happened that weekend, Oswald being the one accused of killing the president, the Dallas police mentioning over and over on television that weekend they felt they had a good case against him, was that pretty much the atmosphere? Was that it was the assassin being buried that day? I think so, yes. Okay. You think that impacted the way people treated this event? Uh, perhaps, yeah. Another, there, there's uh, Louis Saunders, I believe, right here. That's right. Okay, yeah, Louis Saunders right here on the side who's going to uh, officiate at the funeral, and you can see the, the vault there. We have a picture of that, but um, there's there's a police presence back there. There there had been some concern, hadn't there, that there might be some incident I there. I think so. Uh, do you remember there being any additional security that you had to go through as the, as a as a member of the press to, to gain uh, access? No, I uh, I knew all of the uh, local police people, and uh, so I uh, I was able to do my thing. There was a good relationship between the local press and the police in those days. Yes. Okay. Did that did that change at all after the assassination? Uh. I think a lot of things changed a little bit after the assassination. Mm -hmm. uh, concerns about security. And here we have the uh, the top of the vault there, Lee Harvey Oswald, 1939 to 1963, another, another great picture. So was the Oswald funeral pretty much the last, last event related to this that you covered that weekend? Yes. Okay. My goodness, that's such an extraordinary series of pictures from obviously the president arriving with, with Jacqueline, such a happy occasion to the, the burial of the accused assassin, and you were there with your camera. Uh, did, did you use primarily one specific camera, or did you have several? Uh, probably three. Okay. Different lenses. Okay. That's remarkable. Now, you continued, as you said, to work for the Fort Worth Press as the chief photographer for a number of years, and you got to cover... Uh, President Lyndon Johnson after after this these events here. Yes. We have a couple of pictures I'm going to put up of, of President Johnson with, with Lady Bird. Do you remember the circumstances uh, when you took this photo? Uh, this was, uh, he uh, attended a meeting uh, at the Hotel Texas in a ballroom mm -hmm. uh, with a group of people. And uh, this 
would have been uh, arriving at the hotel, I think. Okay. And then one more here. <laughs> Johnson, uh, it looks like he's there at, at an airport there, but he's, he's got it uh, raising up his this, lady's hand. This, this may have been at uh, General Dynamics. Okay, uh, okay, yeah. I think a we visit don't... there, uh, which is now Lockheed Martin. Right. Uh, it, it is just across the uh, runway from the air base, which is now Naval Air Base. Yeah. Now, now, Gene, you took pictures, as you said, of multiple presidents. Do you have a favorite that you photographed? Uh, no, not really. I, uh, I have uh, a collection of pictures in my office at home that, uh, that I take a lot of pride in. Mm -hmm. Did you get to know Lyndon Johnson at all on a personal level? No, okay. no, I didn't. But you photographed him several times. Yes. Well, it's just such extraordinary circumstances and, and history that you found yourself swept up in. And when you came today for this program, you actually brought this this letter that was written to you by someone in Germany. Is that correct? That's right. And and, and she just talks in this about, about how remarkable it was that you were there and you were participating in this moment in history. How do you feel when, when you get a letter from, from Germany? And then there's something else, I think, over here from... Uh, from Switzerland, yes. You get these international letters. How does that make you feel? Well, it's uh, it's unusual. <laughs> yeah, and there's an autograph request in here uh, from someone who wants who wants a, a signature. Do you do you uh, do you sign these things when people uh, ask you for autographs? Not often. Okay. <laughs> does it does it seem odd to you that that, that people write to you like this yes, because yes, of your it, pictures? Yes, it does. Yeah. So your pictures are all here at the Sixth Floor Museum now. Did you ever imagine that your photography would end up in a museum? No. Okay. Well, we're certainly grateful to have him here. And uh, I want to give you guys the chance to ask Mr. Gordon some questions about his experiences or maybe his thoughts on the assassination or Oswald or things like that because he really was at, at a number of uh, interesting locations that weekend. So we have a couple minutes left if you have any questions for Mr. Gordon. would like to know uh, Mr. Gordon's feelings after he found out that Kennedy had been assassinated. Okay. Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about that. But yes, it was very emotional. Uh, and I, uh, I left Fort Worth as quickly as I could and drove to, uh, to Parkland Hospital. Uh, I got there a little late and uh, nothing to photograph there. Then I went on to Love Field but uh, got there just in, as the Air Force One had, was taking off. So uh, I uh, wasn't able to do much about the assassination. I, I've talked to a number of reporters and photographers and I often hear from them that it was easier for them to process what was happening because they had the distraction of their professional obligations. That's right. Uh, because you had a job to do so you could sort of put aside emotion for a moment and just yeah. focus on what your job was. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess in moments like that, it's, it's good to have something to occupy your mind. It's a good question. Any, anything else for, uh, for Mr. Gordon this morning? Uh, who do you think killed JFK? I had a feeling we were going to get asked that question. Who do you think was uh, responsible for the president's death? Oh, I, I think it was Oswald. You don't believe in a conspiracy? Uh, no. Uh, too many unusual things uh, led to it. Mm -hmm. uh, his employment here at sixth floor uh, at the uh, school book depository, uh, I just don't see how it could have been organized. Yeah. Now, Oswald had lived for a time in Fort Worth. He had gone to Lily B. Clayton and some of the other schools there. Right. He had moved all over the country, but his mother, Marguerite, lived in Fort Worth for the rest of her life. Did, That's right. Did you get to know her? Uh, I photographed her uh, a couple of times. W what did you make of her? Uh, unusual woman. Uh-huh. And I think I'm being kind. Okay. Yeah, I, I often hear that she she was unique or eccentric and had, yes. had had an interesting personality. But anyway, to answer the question, you think Oswald did it? No conspiracy. Uh, that's my thought. Okay. Well, that's that's what we're here for. We're here for your opinion. Anything else for for Mr. Gordon this morning? Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, how did Mr. Gordon get interested in uh, photography, and like, how did he get a job with the newspaper? Like, how did that come about? Good question. Okay, uh, I uh, had a little camera, uh, brownie camera, 
uh, when I was a kid, and I uh, had a dark room above the the garage at home, and uh, made a lot of pictures. And uh, then uh, after high school, I got into uh, a career counseling uh, session, and uh, the guy asked what I'd like to do, and uh, and I said, well, I've I've done some photography in the past, and so I got a uh, an internship uh, with a portrait photographer in Big Spring. Worked one summer there, and uh, then came back to Fort Worth, and uh, there was an opening uh, at a, a small. Fort Worth Press newspaper, and I was lucky enough to get that job, and uh, that was it. All came from there. Hmm. How did you get interested in photography to begin with? Was it something that other family members were doing? No, I, th I think not. I uh, I j just like the idea of, of uh, having a camera and taking pictures and processing them. Hmm. Was the assassination that whole sequence in Fort Worth? Was that the most extraordinary moment of your career or were there others I think so yeah that was that was the big one the death of the president is probably going to be hard to beat right yeah all right wonderful we have time for maybe one more question if there's anything else and then we'll uh, we'll thank mr. Gordon for his time today Does mr. Gordon use a digital camera these days <laughs> <laughs> no I uh, I was uh, in management uh, photo director and chief photographer uh, later in my career and uh, I uh, that was when digital cameras were coming in so I never uh, really did much with digital cameras professionally but when you're when you're wandering around town you, you, you just pull out a phone and take a picture that's right okay do you do you <laughs> <laughs> do you still treat a moment like that the way you would professionally? Do you try to line up line up your no, shot and pay attention to light and no, things like I, that? I'm still concerned with composition and and uh, uh, things like that, but it's uh, it's not as big a deal. Yeah, uh, as working with film. Yeah, a lot of automatic settings, I suppose, right. already make yeah. it make it a lot easier. Do you do you wish that that digital technology was available to you in '63? Would that really have helped you? Well, uh, I remember uh, working with the staff uh, at the Star Telegram. Example: We uh, sent a photographer to cover uh, Super Bowl up east, and we packed. Uh, cameras, uh, film processing, chemicals and equipment, uh, an enlarger and a transmitter in a big steamer trunk. Mm -hmm. And he took that. Uh, years later, uh, a photographer at the Star Telegram, after I left, uh, was sent to Afghanistan. He was all over the mountains. He had a, a satellite phone and he had pictures back at the office 10 minutes after he shot them in the wow. mountains in Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the difference yeah. between then and now. But but there's something about those black and white 35 millimeter pictures. There's just something, a beauty in those that, that, that digital uh, technology cannot replicate. That's true. Yeah. I started with four by five camera mm -hmm. first couple of years and then uh, went to a Roloflex uh, roll film camera and then to 35 millimeter after a couple of years yeah uh, and you have to uh, have to be careful I mean with four by five you have half a dozen film holders with two sheets of film in each mm -hmm. one and uh, that's that's all you can work with right right yeah extraordinary well we're so glad that you were where you were that weekend and took all those great pictures so that we can look at them today almost 54 years after you, you saw those those images in real life through the lens of your camera. I've had a great career. I've, I've really been fortunate. Well, we're glad you were here today. Please join me in thanking Mr. Gordon for sharing his story with us today. Thank you.